And developing right now the hunt for Jessica Ridgway's killer, where do police begin? Well, Spencer's police chief calling the killer a predator. It's an intense search, but how do investigators track down the man with so few clues? For some perspective here, Gary Cunningham is joining us now live. He's a retired police lieutenant colonel and law enforcement expert. Thanks for joining us, Gary. You were on the D.C. Serial Sniper Task Force. Just like that case initially, police here have few clues in the Jessica Ridgway case. So how do investigators work around that? Well, several different things that they have to start with. They obviously have uh, to start with where they think the victim was taken. Uh, that would be the uh, the neighborhood canvas that they'd have to do. They do that at the time that the victim was taken. They'd also go back uh, when people may be coming home from work to interview neighbors. They start looking for suspicious people that may have uh, been in the community or any type of reports. They also want to look at the forensic evidence that they do have. They have uh, two, at least three crime scenes there. They have where the uh, body was found, uh, where the victim was taken, and where the backpack was uh, actually recovered. So they'll look at all three of those things for any type of evidence. You're looking for DNA evidence. You're looking for fingerprints. You're looking for uh, small transfer evidence, such as hair, uh, clothing fibers, any type of fluids that uh, may have been uh, exchanged. Uh, then you want to start looking at your sex offenders. Uh, one of the things that I did for five years was manage our sex offender registration. So you start looking at all of the sex offenders that may be in that particular area. Uh, you start looking at uh, the victim. Uh, most of them prefer a certain type of victim. Uh, most sex offenders will uh, operate within their race. They target victims of the same race. So you start looking at all those different things, and uh, you it gives you a place to start. Uh, even though you don't have much evidence, it gives right. you uh, somewhere to go. Tell us a little bit about priorities for these investigators. We've seen pictures of the room where they work. I mean, there are a lot of them, and they're looking at a lot of different things at once. But how do they figure out which is, which is the number one item that they do? Do they appeal to the public? What do they do? Generally, what they do is divide the investigative group into teams so that they can look at all these different leads at the same time. You'll have a team that looks at the forensic evidence. Uh, the autopsy is going to be very important, uh, again, to look to see if there's any type of evidence transfer or DNA evidence. They also want to have a team that looks at uh, safety. Uh, you want to make sure that the public is aware of anything and everything that uh, you know about this person. You have to balance uh, the needs of the public with keeping that information uh, to yourself. So you, they, there has to be a media team that gets that information out as, as quickly as possible because you want to prevent another case like this from happening. Uh, then you want to look at similar cases. Uh, generally, sex offenders have uh, methods of operation. They will do the same thing over and over, and they create a pattern. So you want to look at a sex offender in the past that may have targeted this type of victim. You want to look at a sex offender that's in the area, and you want to start looking at your sex offenders to see where they were when this crime occurred. And based on your experience and knowing what you've heard now about this case, what would you say is the, is the the profile of this person here in this case? Well, again, most sex offenders target within their race, so you figure it's going to be um, probably a white male. Uh, most of them are male, so we can look at that. And then we look at the, the sex offenders that targets this type of child, 10-year-old uh, white female. So when you look at your sex offenders, you'll be able to look at the victims of the sex offenders, and they'll give you a, a clearer picture. The other thing you might want to look at is calls for service in that community for suspicious vehicles. Obviously, anybody that showed any type of a, um, unusual attention towards this victim, if there was somebody in the community, that uh, a male that may have invited her over, or that may have been uh, too friendly or, or too offering of, of things for this victim, you want to look at those people. All right, uh, let's, one more thing, and I think this is probably the thing that the community perhaps is the most concerned. They want to find this killer and get justice for Jessica, but they're also concerned about their own kids right now. Is this guy likely to strike again? Well, that's one of the things that you never know. Uh, the thing about sex offenders is there is some type of mental defect that an individual will look at a child and see them as uh, some type of sex object. So you know that they're, they're not going to be fixed, and if possible, they're not going to stop. Generally, they, you can't fix them. So what, what we can do, the three things that are needed to, uh, to commit a crime, they need the, the ability, the opportunity, and the desire. You can't take away an individual's ability or desire, but you can take away the opportunity. And what, what you have to do, parents have to uh, talk to their kids about the uh, methods of being safe. Neighbors, uh, parents, and communities have to be hypervigilant, watch for suspicious activity within their community. And the investigators, have to keep certain details of the investigation secret so that when they identify a suspect and hopefully uh, do an interview, only the police 
and that suspect will know those particular details. Well, Gary, we appreciate uh, you talking with so us you, and providing You have to insight. balance the needs of the safety. Right. All right. Well, thank you, Gary. We, we certainly appreciate a retired police lieutenant colonel. Thank you. Thank you. You can count on 7 News for updates on the search for Jessica's killer. We'll break the tales on air and online at thedenverchannel.com.